Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Luis, coming to you from this old babe shop. If you guys haven't heard, and I'm sure you guys will hear pretty or pretty soon, is that San Francisco, uh, California, their local government has currently banned all flavors. They can't even buy uh, menthol cigarettes anymore in uh, San Francisco. Um, they really put a clamp down on it. So any vape shop that's in uh, San Francisco is now going to be limited to only selling tobacco flavors. What do you guys think about that? Huh. That's pretty crazy. Um, that's a huge move by a local government that's really going to put a damper on uh, vape businesses, uh, tobacco businesses, stuff like that. Um, and it's kind of crazy because we're all sitting here uh, kind of just twiddling our thumbs, not even thinking about uh, the future of vaping. We think it's going to continue going like it's always been. And uh, that's a big issue because it's possible that it won't. I mean, it's possible that one day you will come into this old vape shop and all you will be able to purchase will be a tobacco flavored e-juice. Now, I don't know about you guys. Uh, but I started vaping on tobacco flavors and menthol flavors, and I've kind of graduated and moved on. I'm more of a dessert person. You guys all know I love Big Willie's Custard. Uh, that's my favorite. I know another one that I like a lot is like Two Pounder and, and uh, Steam Factories, Melanie, and stuff like that. So those kinds of flavors, I mean, is not going to be around for very long. Now, I'm seeing already on the interwebs, I'm seeing on Facebook and Instagram, uh, a lot of people getting called out. I mean, there's a big company called Candy King. Uh, they sell these labels, these products that um, that definitely either look like they're copyright infringement or they're definitely uh, labels that are meant to attract the eye, which in turn means they look like kitty labels. Um, and that's bad. That's bad for us, you know. Uh, but we're guilty as an industry of fostering it and continuing it. I mean, from the conventions all the way down. I mean, it is business. And ultimately... Uh, let's think about it. It, it, it. Packaging sells, you know, packaging definitely sells and it um, is a major part. I mean, if you came into the shop every day and you and you just saw a, a bottle, right, with a basic label, let's say white and black labels, I mean, it's not very catching to the eye. You don't even ask about it. It's It would truly be based on the flavor of the product, uh, not a visual thing. And we know that if, you know, you go to Circle K or you go to Safeway or whatever, a lot of the stuff they put in front of you is packaged a certain color or a certain way because it catches your eye and, and, and in your mind it tricks it to think that it's appetizing. Well, that's packaging. You know, it's the same way. I mean, you look at some of these labels and, you know, for instance, this pink bottle, right? This is made by Propaganda. This is their pink line, right? But it's bright pink. Not only it's bright pink, but it's an elegant label. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not cartoony. It's not... Uh, how would you say it's it's not what we would consider something that's attractive to kids outside of the bright color uh, but this packaging is done very elegantly it's done very well and it looks nice right um, so I try in the shop to avoid carrying products that look like a kitty label and I say I will tell you right now that I am probably guilty along with everybody else of doing it at least once or twice or having something in the shop um, it looks like that now a lot of our stuff like this is done very elegantly too. This is screwberry from steam factory This has been around a long time, you know, it's elegant. It's beautiful. It's a nice label uh, But from the same company and I love you guys at steam factory you guys make a great product So I'm not down talking you guys um, but out of their same labels is this guy here now Melanie is probably the third or fourth of the line that comes out with this kind of cartoonish character you know it kind of reminds me of like the garbage pail kids of you kids that grew up in the 80s you guys remember that um, but it's kind of a cool label you know this was probably steam factory's muff cake was probably the first product that I ever sold in the shop that kind of blew up and I honestly it was a good flavor number one it, it, it stood on its own as a flavor but number two it was just that label of that cupcake with the sprinkles on it you know and it was a cartoon drawing and it did wonders for us. So for me, that was like the first time of like thinking, okay, packaging, product labeling, branding is very, very important, you know. Uh, so I've brought that stuff in, you know. I've had it in the shop, and 
we sell it and it sells well. And now we're never here uh, to sell to kids. We ID like crazy here in the shop. So we're not here to attract the kids so that they look at it. It's not what we're here for. Um, that's not what we're doing. We're honestly here to try to help people quit smoking. So as an industry, everybody's pointing fingers right now. Everybody's saying, oh, well, the juice makers, you know, uh, this and that. Let's boycott. You know, we're guilty of it. And not all of us. Not all of us are guilty. I'm sure there's some, te the, some shop owners out there that have never put that stuff on their shelf. But being in a shop, it's very difficult not doing that. Uh, just because of the competition, the market and everything, it's almost like you have to put certain juices on your shelves. Now, the vape industry, the promoters, the magazines, the the uh, convention people, they've kind of always been behind this because, again, product packaging sells and it does. So we can't put the blame on everybody else. We really have to look at ourselves as shop owners, you know, and be like, okay, do I want to carry this product on my shelf? Now, for instance, this guy here, Reds, right? This is probably the number one selling juice, I would say, across Arizona right now, if not California. These guys are making lots of money. Now, this box in itself looks good, right? Like, it looks cool. It says Reds. It's apple juice, whatever. But it looks like a juice box, right? You see that? So what do we do? What do we do as an industry? Do we take this off of our shelves? Do we have them rebrand it? Is it going to sell as well and not in a different box? The juice itself is very good, but it is the packaging that catches your eye the first moment you come into the shop. Um, you know... Oh, no, same thing, kind of cartoon, it's refreshing. This is all products that I sell in my shop, right? Now, what do I do as a shop owner? Do I drop them all and risk losing money um, in a time where the industry is definitely on a downturn and has been on a downturn for a while, or do I continue to sell it? Um, that's really a tough decision to make. I have to really evaluate these things for myself as a business owner. I know that we are very diligent in making sure that we're IDing everybody that comes through that looks under the age of 27. Um, so we're definitely doing that on a regular basis. So we're not advertising or promoting to kids, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, for instance, I will give you a product. Now, this guy here, he was in my shop the other day, and we were talking and everything, and he was talking about how he wanted to do everything right and got a lot of hate from a lot of the under industry makers, under industry people, because... You know, he had made some statements, you know, two years ago when the regs dropped or a year ago when the regs dropped. He had made some statements about the quality of his juice, the packaging and labeling. Now, pro art, right? Adam, Aaron, you guys saw this. You guys built this. Now, to me, this is a very basic, simple label. Um, it does not look like it's promoting to children. It does not look like it's uh, anything other than the product it is, which is juice right so these guys have done a great job but these guys have also come under attack and they've also had a unfortunate downturn of their own business because they don't have the packaging that people can sell you know uh, I heard a story from these guys that they had talked to a distributor the distributor was like damn that juice is good and he's like awesome man let's get it into your your distributorship let's sell it and he brought him the bottles he looked at the labels and the distributor looked at him and said I can't sell this shit. That label is horrible, right? That sucks because the product was good, the flavor was good, but because the packaging and the labeling, it did not appeal to the eye for him for some reason, and he would not sell it for them. So we have people in the industry who are doing things right, and these distributors and the general public and the population are saying, we don't want it because the label doesn't catch our eyes. So we're in a big catch-22 in our industry right now. So I just see everybody arguing. Everybody's talking about boycotting certain brands and not uh, supporting certain companies that sell certain things. And I just think it's kind of crazy. We're going to go into another frenzy of, of vape drama, um, of shops calling out other shops or businesses calling out other businesses because of their packaging. Be cool. Be calm, people. Um, be active that's the biggest thing be active in your local advocacy groups be active in your safada advocacy groups uh, because eventually if it's in san francisco right now i can guarantee you it's going to go up and down that coast here pretty soon los angeles san diego you're going to go north up to i don't even know what the hell's in north california 
But what's going to happen is that all of California is going to follow suit with San Francisco. Every vape shop in California is going to start shutting down. Now, from there, we're going to have one or two things happen. Lots of people lose their jobs. A lot of businesses go out of business. We're going to get an influx of shops, possibly in Phoenix, because these people move into Phoenix, Arizona to open up shop. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be, you know, and I'm always uh, hesitant to give my predictions on some of this stuff like this because, you know, we get fed misinformation. We get, we read or interpret it differently. But this is a move that is super devastating to the vape industry in, in, in San Francisco and could be a move that's super damaging to the rest of the industry throughout the United States. So I just wanted to kind of make a video for you guys, kind of explain it. Um, it happened in San Francisco. It can happen here in Arizona. It can happen um, at any time, at any moment. Uh, our governments can say we can no longer have flavors, and then boom, it's gone, right? That would suck. So I need you guys to be active. I need you guys to be coming in here and asking questions to see how you guys can get involved. You know, sign up for Casa.org. Uh, check out Safada. I know we have a local group here called NAVB and Safada, and I, I believe there's a merger going on here. And we're just trying to figure it out. And we're going to need you guys to definitely be active and vocal and talk to your friends about what vaping's done for you and how long it's kept you off of cigarettes, you know. We get a lot of negative press. We get a lot of negative... Um, uh, yeah, just press, man. Between the batteries blowing up, they're saying e-cigs are hacking computers now. You know, they're really clutching at straws to, to really shut down this industry. Um, it's a product that has changed lots of people's lives. You know, the uh, Royal College of Physicians says it's 95 to up to 99% safer than smoking. But our FDA is saying it's not. Um, hopefully that changes here soon. Uh, but our local governments are starting to ban flavors. So I just wanted to give you guys an update. I want you guys to be paying attention. Uh, the moment that... If that law happens to come across in Phoenix, Arizona, I can guarantee you that Safada and NAVB and the future group that's coming together uh, will definitely be active in fighting that. And we're going to need each and every one of you guys and your support um, in order to do that, to fight it, to make sure that this doesn't happen in Phoenix. Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, pay attention. Be on the lookout. Watch for our videos here at This Old Vape Shop. We, we want to stay on top of all this stuff and make sure nothing goes wrong. Uh, but it happened in San Francisco. You know, they tried to stop it in Indiana. Indiana's turning around. But right now in San Francisco, you can no longer buy anything other than tobacco flavors, not even menthol flavor anymore. Now, the vape industry isn't huge in San Francisco, so there's not, I don't even know if I read it right, but there's only like 10, 15 shops in San Francisco simply because of the high prices of rent and whatnot and however the buildings are, I don't know, from what I've read or understood. Uh, but those guys didn't have enough people to fight. We're in a city of 6 million. We're in a position of having 200 plus shops in Phoenix, Arizona. I'd say there's probably 25 to 35 active shops that are in uh, a part of a advocacy group here local. I would definitely encourage you guys to uh, support those shops. Um, they're all over the place. You know, check their door, see if they're Safadas. Ask the members, ask the employees when you go in. Hey, are you guys a part of Safada, a part of NAVB? What are you guys doing for advocacy? Advocacy gets so blown out and burnt out. A lot of people are tired of hearing about it because they haven't. We've been fortunate here in Phoenix. We haven't had to face a whole lot of things. And, and the few things that have come up, we've been able to kind of squash relatively quickly. Um, but that's not always going to be the case, guys. And when there's a call to action, we definitely hope that you guys answer it and hopefully um, help the industry out so that we can continue doing and selling the products that we want to sell to you guys that you guys love so much. I know we're going to be a lot more active in making sure that the labels and products we pick up are not anything that might be misconstrued as kitty labeling. I don't think anybody in the industry uh, is really advertising to kids. I think they just know packaging and they know that pictures sell. So they do it. It's simple. It's easy. Um, and it puts money in their bank accounts, uh, the juice companies and designers and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, man, I just wanted to let you guys know that that's what's happening. That's what's going on in the uh, vape advocacy realm. 
This is a big blow to the industry, and it could have ripple effects throughout the whole country. So pay attention, guys. Be active um, and support shops and support advocacy that are fighting for our rights to vape. I know it doesn't seem like much, but this product has changed a lot of people's lives, and we have to be able to have that opportunity to continue to change people's lives, and we need you guys to help us do that. All right, guys, my name is Luis, and I will see you guys next time at this old vape shop.